Hello and welcome to another Smuggle live stream. It is already Friday evening. It is the 15th of March, the Ides of March 2019. And tonight's topics, your thoughts on Small Gold on SGT report. We had Sean and I a sit down and we discussed silver, gold, cryptocurrencies the other day and I think it went well and I was going through some of the comments you know it's a different audience that SGT has than our small circle of friends that we have here so I'm going to go through some of those comments I'm going to take some of your comments first we're going to take a look at the gold and silver markets the crypto markets as well as some of the latest news on the Mueller probe and some news on Brexit so let's close out the week here with uh, what happened in gold and silver and it was a good end of the week uh, gold was up up a little bit uh, did get past that uh, 1300 mark which is important and silver did stay above uh, 15 for the, the end of the week but it didn't crack 16 obviously so let's take a look now at the gold price and the equity prices were also up the Dow Jones is up 138 points so that's up 0.54 percent still below 26,000 they'll close at 25,848 Nasdaq up 0.76 percent uh, that was up 57 points to 76.88 S&P 500 up a half a percent to 28.22 let's take a look at the gold price gold price was up 5,076 cents up nearly a half a percent to thirteen hundred and two dollars and thirteen cents and that's where it sits now because there will be no more gold trading until Sunday evening. Silver did a little bit better, and that's what we like to see when gold goes up and it continues a sustained rise. We expect silver to go up a little bit more. But as we've seen, when gold goes down, silver goes down even more. But silver did manage to outpace gold today with a 10 cent gain. But that 10 cent gain is a big deal for silver. That ended up being a 0.64% gain in the last close was 15 $15.27 $15 and what did that do to the unsustainable gold silver ratio many people have been fed a steady diet that that gold silver ratio is unsustainable we're going to go through some of the arguments that people have stuck in their craws to their detriment i believe uh but the gold silver ratio today is at about 84 and a half to one but this is a point, and we're going to discuss this again. Over the last five years, many of the people have been insisting and giving you all the rationale. Silver is rarer than gold. It comes out of the ground. All the arguments that we're going to go through, they've been saying it for years. And yet, if you had bought gold and silver back in late 2014, your silver would be worth 31% less than your gold. There's a reason for that. But we're not going to get into that at the moment. We're going to move on now. I think we had one other gold story for the day. You see these from time to time. I don't know if this is projection or wish, wishful thinking. This is the economist lackluster. Indians may be falling out of love with gold. You know, they talk to somebody in India or Bombay. I don't know where they come up with this because if you look at the gold import numbers and the gold import numbers in India are a good proxy of gold demand because they don't mine any gold in India. And they've been very strong the last few years. No indication they're on the decline, but you always have these. Yeah, they may be out of out of um, love with gold this week or last week or the week before. Generally, what happens in India is when the price rises, they don't buy it. It's something that they view as a luxury good or they know to buy it when it's lower. They stock up on it's lower and it gets higher. They wait and they hold off on it, but that doesn't. And yes, when the when the rupee is weak, that makes the gold price more expensive in their local currency. So I don't pay much attention to these articles. It's very similar to what you're going to see how we analyze a lot of the silver and gold pumper ar arguments. They're based on generalities, anecdotal, or they just heard something a lot, or they think some expert said something. And many of the experts, unfortunately, also speak in extreme generalities but they get away with it because they're experts and they know what they're talking about so when they say things like silver is so useful it has so many uses doesn't really cut it with me because it's not how many uses it has a lot of things have a lot of uses copper has a lot of uses too it's how much of a use does it have 
<clears throat> and how much, for example, silver is required to meet that use. Just to say silver has thousands of uses, but if they're all in microscopic amounts, it really doesn't matter how many uses it has. So for example, palladium doesn't have that many uses at all, but it's in high demand for the one use that it does have. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's move over to cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, starting to move a little bit, but not really, still hanging around 3,900, but it was up to 3,903 today in the last 24 hours at 1.23%. Ethereum made a bit of a move up three and a quarter percent, up to 136. Litecoin now pulling ahead of other coins is now in the fourth position at 5813. That was up four and a half percent today. It is at its highest level since October. More interestingly, it is at its highest level versus Bitcoin since June. So Litecoin is making a move ahead of other coins and Bitcoin Cash, which it passed in market cap about a month ago, is up big today at 143, up about eight and a half percent. Now, for the other news in cryptocurrencies today, something we need to revisit that we talked about last night. And that is this CBO Futures. Now, we know the CME Group and the CBO Futures launched last, well, not last year, it was actually 2017. And we reported yesterday that the CME Group was saying that their Bitcoin Futures contracts were up 19% average daily volume in the first quarter versus the last quarter of 2018. And yet, we learned yesterday that the CBO decided it was going to drop its futures contract and we speculated last night why would that be now it's they're not quite sure they haven't really given a proper explanation of why they're dropping their futures contract now some are speculating that more people are trading the cme than they are the cba that that's possible and they say they need to review how they approach their space and i speculate a lot of people are not paying attention to this but the cbo e is also working with the Van Eck group to get a Bitcoin ETF approved. And they filed that back in end of January, refiled it after the government reopened. And there's a waiting period now, 45 days from February 20th, which I believe is like April 6th or 7th, and 45 days in which the SEC possibly could approve it, or otherwise they give it another 45 days, goes out 90 days. But the idea is that the CBO group, CBOE group, is actually involved in having a ETF in front of the SEC. Now, why is that important? Well, one of the reasons that the SEC has not approved of the any Bitcoin ETF for two reasons. One is storage, but I think that one's been solved. There's a lot of big players in the game now. Fidelity is storage. IBM is looking at storage. A lot of companies have storage. I think they've cracked the how to keep Bitcoin offline in cold storage so that the SEC would feel comfortable that the Bitcoin was safe for investors. But what they're still concerned about, and they've always been concerned about, is the possibility of manipulation on the exchange, which is interesting because we know they have Bitcoin, they have gold and silver ETFs and oil ETFs, and we know that those commodities are often manipulated. But in any event, the SEC is saying they they're not quite comfortable that you don't have proper market surveillance agreements in place so you can check it out and figure out what's going on. Now, NASDAQ is now involved in that. Um, <clears throat> New York Stock Exchange and BACT, they have proper market surveillance. There's a lot of normal you know, companies that are engaged in that service to stocks and other markets now for Bitcoin that the SEC should feel comfortable with the market surveillance agreements that the Bitcoin ETFs that are pending have in place. What's interesting, though, is the CBOE had, let's take a look here, here it is. They made that point, and, and this is, I guess, why the CBOE is pulling out of doing its Bitcoin futures trading next month it's possible that they are going to be not wanting the conflict and they're going to have a etf online and here's what they wrote in their 
Bitcoin ETF proposal back in late January to the SEC. They said, we believe based on the previous application of the standard, the market for Bitcoin futures, which is what they were running at the time since 2017, they're still running it, they're just not going to run it next month, is a regulated market of significant size, which the exchange has in place comprehensive surveillance sharing agreements. And thus the commission should approve the proposal. And then in the footnote, they mentioned both CBOE Futures Exchange, that's them, and Chicago Mercantile Exchange, that's the CME group, the one that runs COMEX. Both members of the Intermarket Surveillance Group have offered contracts with Bitcoin Futures since 2017. What CBOE is noting in their application for the ETF is, listen guys, you worry about market surveillance? You got the CME group, you got us, we've been running this stuff for a year now, over a year, and we've got the proper market surveillance in place. One of the when the Winklevoss twins put forward a Bitcoin ETF back in 2016 or 17, it got rejected largely on the fact that most of the trading, 85% of Bitcoin trading actually was taking place in unregulated or on unregulated exchanges in China. That's no longer the case because China has no trading other than, well, mainland China doesn't. There's trading going on in Hong Kong. Point is that CBOE is saying that Look, we've got the Intermarket Surveillance Group. We're members of it. Um, this has been going on now for a year. You should feel comfortable that um, we have the proper market surveillance agreements in place. So a lot of people are, are looking at that and they're saying, well, there you go. CBOE is exiting the Bitcoin futures. There must be a lack of interest. Um, not necessarily. We, I suspect that CBO is backing out of this because either... It's an either and or, not an either or. Either they just did not generate the volume that the CME group, and that makes sense. Sometimes people, they all congeal around one trading platform and they lost to the CME group. And or they don't want to be involved in it anymore because now they're going to be involved in Bitcoin ETF and they maybe don't want the conflict there. Who knows? But it's interesting that it's not as simple as CBO is CBOE is leaving and therefore there's no interest in Bitcoin. Indeed, putting aside the 90% increase by the CME group in Bitcoin futures trading, regular trading here is now at up to $11 billion for the first time in nearly a year. Bitcoin trading volume topped $11 billion for the first time. Uh, that according to Coindesk. So it's not like there's a lack of interest in Bitcoin futures trading, Bitcoin trading. Uh, Bitcoin hash rate, Litecoin hash rate, all up. Transactions are up now back towards where they were nearly a year ago as well. All right. Anything else here? Well, when we've got fun strats, <laughs> Lee here. Yeah, never heard this one before. Bitcoin price scheduled for August breakout. Fun strat, Tom Lee. He's always saying this. So I just pass that along with the grain of salt that it's worth. Uh, Lightning Network continues to develop. There's another company here. Fury integration to bring Bitcoin lightning payments to more merchants and that's what that's the intended use of Bitcoin it's not to be locked inside of an ETF it's meant to be used as a currency and on ATMs uh, Bitcoin radar put this out coin ATM radar showing that in February there were again lots of Bitcoin ATM Litecoin ATM installations uh, Litecoin added another 120 just in one month, and there's now nearly 2,900 uh, ATMs that dispense Litecoin worldwide, where there's 4,380 that dispense Bitcoin. But uh, Litecoin is growing faster than Bitcoin, but most, almost all ATMs that are installed have Bitcoin. Litecoin is the second most available in those ATMs. Well, let's move on from cryptocurrency. A quick look at the markets. I found this interesting. We talked the other night about $144 trillion in global debt. Well, guess what? $9.2 trillion of it is negative interest debt. Very interesting. It's actually a good thing in a way. <coughs> as Bernie Sanders said, that's a good thing. No, it's, it's a good thing in a way in that at least there's not as much money owed because there's negative interest rates there. Chances of defaulting on negative interest rates are less you can still default on the principal but um they're less when you have to pay uh, less than you don't pay interest you actually receive money 
and you charge a fee to hold money. Over to the Mueller probe. Interesting point the other night. We noted that in a non-binding resolution, the U.S. House of Representatives, it's like 424 to 0, said they want to see the Mueller report should be made public. Lindsey Graham says no way. And he's actually saying he wants to have a special counsel appointed to investigate the investigators and the FISA abuse and so on. So we'll see what type of a <coughs> pit bull Flimsy Graham can be. Now, he was, and we did see. Normally, I'm used to seeing Flimsy Graham behind McCain saying, yeah, like he said, like he said. But he seems to be his own man now because during the Kavanaugh <coughs> hearings, he jumped up and he started yelling at the Democrats about, uh, you're trying to ruin this man's life. Tell him, tell Miss Kagan, Lindsay said hello. He was very mad uh, during that, and he appears to be maybe his own man now. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, we'll see if he gets his way with getting a special counsel appointed. He has already quietly pushed through some judges already on the at the district court level. I think four or five judges, new appointees. That Trump made. Now, over on Brexit, this is a real uh, disgrace, actually, what's going on over there. So, they tried twice to get a deal, and they had the worst shutdown of an, a sitting government on a proposal on the first deal. Historic defeat. Basically, everyone in the party, both parties, voted against her. She came back with a deal last week. It was got voted down almost as badly and the idea is by march 29th if they don't have a deal it's game over and that's it you're gone and well now they're all like well 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 we could have another referendum or maybe we can extend that yeah let's maybe maybe we vote to extend it and the eu has told them no this is your last deal and they've actually said you either take this deal or you don't get brexit that's not how it works but uh, they're showing they're, they're kind of in control. And now what they want to do, the EU, the, the Brits may, and they, they want to say, well, can we have an extension? Now, an extension just means they have to pay more money for nothing just to stay in the EU while they're trying to negotiate a withdrawal, which they're not in a good position to do. But this isn't even ironic, but, but check this out. This is what Theresa May said 50 times, and I'm not going to play it 50 times not going to extend Article 50. We have a timetable. We're working to that timetable. We will leave on the 29th of March 2019. That's just once she said it. Uh, we will not be uh, extending, uh, revoking Article 50 or asking for the extension of Article 50 and we will be leaving the EU on the 29th of March next year. We will leave and we'll leave on the 29th of March 2019. We're going to leave the European Union on the 29th of March next year. As of 29th of March 2019, we leave the European Union. We'll leave the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. We will be leaving the European Union on March 29th. But the UK is leaving the European Union on the 29th of March. We're leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. This Parliament put the exit date into legislation and we will... That's enough of that. There you go. She says it 50 times. And there you see, well, that may not be the case because they're looking for some type of extension and uh, they'll probably get it because it looks like two-thirds to three-quarters of the members of parliament, they're not really keen on this, uh, this Brexit thing, even though 52% of Brits voted for it. Now let's move on from that. Uh, full stop. We will be leaving the European Union on the 29th of March, full stop. Well, not really, but... All right. Oh, now, I had promised last night hmm, that uh, we, had, we had mentioned that Beto, or Robert Francis O'Rourke, was running for president, and we had on Bernie the other night. We were going to ask him what he thought of the current field of Democratic candidates, but uh, I don't know if you heard, but today he... Well, I'll show you what happened today. He banged his head getting out of the shower. No joke, he actually did. And, um, well, he's got a... I'm fine, but I got a big uh, big bandage on my head. But that's not going to stop me at all. But uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't come on the show tonight because I had other obligations and I'll probably be back tomorrow. So we're going to have 
That was a pre-recorded statement from Bernie. We'll have him back uh, tomorrow. But it says here, Bernie cut his head on the edge of a shower door, received seven stitches. So he's going to be in South Carolina and Nevada. We'll probably try to ring him in tomorrow night. All right. Uh-oh. We got a moron here. Presenting the distinguished international news commentator and foreign correspondent. <laughs> This has been an extraordinary week in world affairs. No, I told Hillary Clinton that that's moronic. Right, anyone who's ever eaten an egg, anyone over the age of 40 has probably known that eggs were considered bad, high cholesterol. Then they said, no, eggs are good. Uh, cholesterol in the egg is good for you. And then there was, well, but you should have egg whites and not egg yolks. And then they said, no, no, the yolk has the most nutrients. And now scientists are saying eggs may, may, may not be good for you after all. You have a 17% increase in cardiovascular disease and death. Now, we did touch on this in um, with Sean at SGT Report on Science. I mean, I am not an expert on cholesterol. I am not an expert on vaccines or autism but I, or climate change. But I do know that science is an ongoing endeavor and it's math science is not math math has irrefutable rules there really is no such things as settled science and my point is if you can't even figure out whether an egg is good for you or not there's no way you know what the climate's going to look like 12 years from now but i digress and let us move on now to the sgt report and my reflections and your reflections have you seen. Well, first off, Sean decided to title it, What Will You Be Holding When the Dollar Dies? Now, there's an assumption in there that we didn't discuss at all. We never discussed dollar collapse or any of that. Um, we did discuss, um, well, I think he had an assumption in his question, why is the gold-silver ratio out of whack? And I, my immediate response was, I don't think it is. It's a bit of silence after that, but we'll get into that. But the idea that um, what you'll be holding when the dollar dies was not, to me, the topic of the conversation. But it is a good headline, and uh, it still gets the point across. So you're going to have, I mean, as here, it looks like you have gold, silver, or dollars. All right. Let's just do some high-level reactions to the show. It's gotten like 30,000 views. Um, let's start with the negative. So there was a lot of, well, this guy sucks. Let me show you some of those. Um, this guy that you have on is a shoulda, coulda, but if is going against everything and everyone you've had on your show. Well, that is correct because they've received, as you'll see, and many of the comments reflect all of the same tired arguments about why silver should be higher than it is. What's interesting, he's calling me a shoulda, coulda. No, <laughs> that's what these people are. They're the ones who've been saying that silver should be higher. I'm saying it is where it is, and I've rationalized where it is based on looking at what's happened over the past 100 years, 50 years, 20 years, 10 years, and 5 years. But this soldier American was not a fan. And we had this one. Let's see what this one says here. I don't agree with this guy's comments on this guy. Who's this guy? On the ratio of gold to silver. And then we get the silver is way undervalued and will outperform gold in the wrong ro long run. Silver has always been considered money. And don't forget the Joker. This Joker is wrong about silver. His thoughts are based on the current mindset of silver, which has been completely skewed from reality for decades. That's another argument they make is that somehow silver is just... It's just fake. Everything's been fake for 100 years. And when it restores to its true nature, it's going to be like thousands of dollars. And the gold will come out of the Grand Canyon or whatever nonsense. Here's another one. He sucks. I like this one. This guy. <laughs> oh, wait, this guy. Who is this guy? This guy seems a little clueless about what is going to happen. I don't know who knows what's going to happen. But silver is down because the banks want to own more of it. There you go. Now you know. Don't be a sheep, people. <laughs> go and get some silver. This was one of the most liked comments 
I don't know if they liked it because he said this guy is clueless or because he exhorts them not to be sheep and go get yourself some silver. Now, there was a guy here out of face. Is this this guy? <laughs> that's me is actually pretty in tune with what's what. This subject is in his wheelhouse. It's in my bellywick. It's the thing that I know the best. And J.P. Morgan is likely holding for clients. There is no evidence that it's theirs. Then there's this. This one appears a lot. He's a gatekeeper. Like I'm working for the banks with a Rothschild or something like that. Um, makes people think he's pro-metal. See, this is all a scheme here. It's a conspiracy. Small Gold with his 3,800 subscribers and three or four dozen people that come on every night. What I'm actually doing is I'm tricking you into thinking I'm pro-metals so I can execute on my gatekeeper scheme to keep you out of precious metals. Yep, that's the scheme. So he sucks there. Let's see, we got more he sucks. Let's see, here's another one. Yep, he pumps Bitcoin daily. He hates silver. Listen to his channel and you can hear it. Um, yeah, I used to visit his channel. He attracts two listeners by doing interviews like SGT. Then he hates on silver and gold on his own channel. That's why I went on to SGT was to get people to come over to the channel so then I can hate on gold and silver. Now, he either has no idea or he's counterintelligence, so not worth listening to. So either you are a counterintelligent, a disinformation agent, and as you'll see in a few minutes, perhaps even a shill. <laughs> All right, that's counterintelligence. This is the mindset of the people who follow this. All right, now here's a good one. This, this guy, this guy again, this guy is full of beans. Silver outperformed gold. Oh, once they get rid of the Fed, that's going to happen. <laughs> and they go to a gold-backed currency. They actually believe this stuff. But I'm full of this guy is full of beans. But you'll see when we get to we get rid of the Fed and we go to a gold backed currency, uh, that's it. And I told him I love beans. I, I you can't argue with a guy like that. Then Jason here says I'm not a fan of Lewis. When will these people grow some balls? Like this guy needs to grow some balls instead of playing the game. Why don't you actively work at ending the game? I don't know what that means. Um, use your expertise to sound the alarm. You're a slave too, Lewis. And I just wrote, I'm not a fan of Jason. He's not a fan of mine. I'm not a fan of yours. He's a friend of ours. Friend of yours. Friend of mine. Friend of yours. Friend of ours. Not sure what he's getting at there. Well, that's our friend Jason, who I'm not a fan of. All right. What else do we have? In the he sucks department. <laughs> it's another one. Who's right? This Lewis guy or Ted Butler? What about the JP Morgan horde? Okay. Ted Butler's been in the business and knows what's up. He's got proof. He's got proof, unlike Lewis's feelings. Oh my goodness. Kind of figured. So this guy, this guy sounds like a made up name. Controlled opposition or shill, maybe? Yes, controlled opposition, counterintelligence. That's what I do. Yeah. And I asked them, and you know, they don't respond. Have you seen any evidence that JP Morgan owns a silver they're purported to own? Or do you just believe what you hear and claim shill, S C H I L L? If someone asked you to support the basis for your belief, of course, they're not going to tell me. Some will. And they come up with these rationales, and I'll explain. Well, we'll see those in a minute. All right, what else do we have under the he sucks? Sorry, but your guest is way off base. And then I ask him, like, give me some facts, some analysis, but I don't expect to see any of this stuff. All right, the next one under he sucks. I hope this is the last interview with this guy. Otherwise, great work. I don't know what that means. Sean, vaccine stuff is great. Then Silver Slave says, this guy's a gatekeeper. This guy is a gatekeeper. He makes out he's a, he's a gold guy, but then he tells you why not to buy it. <laughs> That's what I do every night. I'm gatekeeping y'all. Stay inside. I pretend that I'm a gold guy, but then I tell you, don't buy any gold. 
Most people thought I was saying don't buy any silver, so it's interesting that he thinks I'm a gold guy. Now, what else do we have here? These were fun. Let's see what else we got. Uh, there's a few more. He sucks. Just a couple more. All right. <laughs> this one's good. This guy is bad. Bad choice to interview, sir. Michael says, Ted Butler has shown that Silver's been manipulated, blah, blah, blah. What this clown is saying, this idiot is also saying, J.P. Morgan hasn't been hoarding, already been shown that they have. <laughs> yep, he's seen it. He knows that J.P. Morgan's got the silver. Eh, they won more here. Why did you interview this clown, this guy? I'm glad you pushed back on his misinformation. I don't know what misinformation I gave, but uh, they didn't like it. All right, now we're going to get into there were some we'll get into some of the more I wouldn't say salient arguments where people try to make arguments about why they either liked or didn't like. But uh, here's some people that enjoyed it. Let's see. Chris Garcia says good aggressive debate with moderation. I think it was a lively conversation. I I don't even think it was a debate, but. Uh oh! By the way, the one thing I might it went over it got overlooked when Sean started out. He was saying that a lot of these channels are are knocking back on the anti-vax arguments, and he says they don't they they don't want to hear truth. They're they're against truth. They're trying to repress truth. And I said, well, I'm not sure. Like the anti-vax position is truth. I think the anti-vax position is another position. It's not necessarily truth. And I think that's a that's a fallacy. A lot of people think that if you present an alternative point of view, that's what it is. It isn't necessarily truth, period, fact. This guy, Sean, this guy, an honest debate. What a novel idea. Thanks, Sean and Lewis. I do think precious precision metals are a good idea. I like precision metals, too. Um, I also pray none of us have to experience a collapse. Yes, that's a point we talked about. These people, and Sean and I both agree, you know, you know, I should be hoping for a collapse. God bless you all, my friends, especially your son, Sean. Well, that was a nice comment there. From Sean to Sean and his son, Sean. All right. And then we had one other person who expressed that they enjoyed it. This is Mike Nelson. Finally, somebody talking about sense. Talking sense about silver versus buying gold. If you're buying silver, reconsider. Save your money to buy smaller portions of gold eagles, gold eagles, and bars. I wasn't making any recommendations to do anything. All I was trying to do is explain why the gold-silver ratio was higher than all these other people expected it to be. Gary says, Mike, I totally agree. You better hold what rich guys hold, gold, and then Zipper Fixer, who is a small gold mug stacker. He's here. And yes, there were. Let's just go through some of the some of y'all who are listening to this guy who were commenting on it. So Zipper Fichter says, thank you so much for having Lewis on your show and Pablo Pina also. Good interview, Lewis. Lots of good points worth listening to. Thanks. That was a very highly ranked comment too. 17 likes. What other small gold mug stackers and game changers left comments? Tossing Molotovs. Should have Luis on more often. Si, senor. Uh, this guy. Not exactly buying what this guy is selling. And I asked, what was I selling? All right. That wasn't meant to show that. It was meant to show Tossing Molotovs. Another small gold mug stacker and game changer. Philip Quinn says, two of my favorite people. I assume he was talking about uh, Sean and myself. And this one. Joe Lazaro commenting to Powell Mountain Mike. Where did you dig this guy up? Where did you dig this guy up? He has a bias to gold because he's a dealer in gold. In addition to being a misinformation agent, a counterintelligence agent, a gatekeeper, and a shill, he's also a dealer in gold. And you'll see when the collapse in fiat comes. Well, and Joe says uh, he's not a dealer. He's just another guy. With a YouTube channel, channel, and I said to Joe, "Yep, I'm just another Joe, not even a guy. You guys can call me Joe." All right, let's take a look at some of the arguments now that people made once they 
decided that uh, mm, they listened and they didn't like what they heard. One of the common things was they heard something that wasn't said. I'll give you an example. Let's look at this one. I think he's wrong about silver and not for the reason he says that silver isn't a good investment. He says gold is about half jewelry, half monetary, where silver is over half industrial and a bit of it. Adam Smith, I didn't say silver wasn't a good investment. I explained why the gold-silver ratio wasn't out of whack. I never said it wasn't a good investment. But see, once they hear the criticism of silver, but why it's not that, then, then it's like you're, you're insulting silver. You're going to see a lot of that. Um, you get the cult of silver, the religion of silver. Chris Christou, if this guy thinks silver is not important, then he obviously does not know what he's talking about, this guy. And again, I never said silver wasn't important. I explained silver was important in industry, was prized for jewelry. I explained why the gold-silver ratio was high, because less than 15% of silver demand was for investment. But this guy, he heard, he heard this guy say silver is not important. Did not say silver wasn't important. Now, sometimes they hear what you say, but they uh, misinterpret the whole thing. So David says, I love your channel, but this guy, this guy you have is, is a bag of blithering word salad cuz. If he knew anything about any of the precious metals markets, he would have made the very obvious connection that India, yes, it buys gold and mass quantity for jewelry, but their jewelry is in their savings and on. I make that point all the time, and I did make the point that they buy jewelry in the form. It's savings and wealth, but gold necklaces and bangles are not used as money, so they don't buy it for money. They buy it to wear it, and yeah, it's valuable, and they hold it. Then we heard the... <laughs> I love this one. See, they, they hear this stuff, so they believe it. Silver is easy to manipulate until someone stands for delivery. That's the old Comex default. Someone big, maybe China, is going to stand for delivery. And then it's game over for Comex and it's all going to collapse. The reason that story is so stupid is because they want to believe that there's 150 million ounces in the JP Morgan vaults that they say JP Morgan owns, but it's their trade. And we know that there's 300 million ounces of silver at the COMEX. And there's plenty of silver. Everyone wanted to stand for delivery. And this, this guy. Who is this guy? All right. What else do we have in the arguments? A lot of people pull this kind of thing. They, they pull the old uh, argument from authority. Uh, they, they consider these people authority. Who, what are these people? Some kind of authorities? What are you, an authority or something over here? These people. This guy. He doesn't, he's nobody. That's basically what they were saying. So here's this one here. He's making the argument from authority. Um, Mike Maloney and many others' arguments on Silver's defeat, Lewis. Yes. But Mike Maloney can make all the arguments he wants about Silver being undervalued. But it's lower today than it was in 2007 while gold is much higher. That's my whole point. It was the gold-silver ratio. It wasn't one is better than the other. Silver is not important. Silver is not valuable. The idea is when you say for 10 years something is undervalued, undervalued, and it continues to be undervalued and actually gets even more undervalued, I don't know how you're an authority. But so I say reality trumps arguments and well-crafted YouTube videos. But we had a few more of these types of argument from authority. You got to trust those who've steered you wrong. I'll take the word and work of Ron Kirby, Bill Holter, Jim Sinclair, and Gerald Slenty. And now he didn't say over this guy. He said over this person, I'll keep my silver. Okay. Because they've been correct about the direction of the gold-silver ratio of the past years. I don't even know. I don't know if Ron or Bill or Jim or Gerald have been saying the gold-silver ratio is unsustainable. I haven't heard that. I know Jim Conclear said gold 50,000, but um, and I I'd never heard that. But uh, Glenn's going to take the word, argument from authority. There's another one. 
about Robert Kiyosaki. He's going to trust Robert Kiyosaki over this guy. Let's see. There's one more here. This guy. This guy, small goal. What does he know? He's a shill. Sean, good job on setting this guy straight on <laughs> how valuable an asset silver is. I bet when hyperinflation sets in, he will wish he had listened to you. Ted Butler, David Morgan, and other real silver experts, and not just follow his own wacky ideas. The gold-silver ratio is what it should be? Really? Yeah, it is what it is. I've never heard that expression before. And the gold-silver ratio has been... Re See, the thing is, the reality, they don't believe it. They're like, well, it is, but it shouldn't be. And anyone who believes that the gold-silver ratio actually is 85 and thinks it should be 85, well, David Morgan, uh, Ron Kirby... <laughs> They just start naming people, and like that's gonna happen. Sorry, Lewis, but I will believe real experts over some Yahoo I never heard of before today. And I ask him, which I won't get a response to. Do you have the ability to review facts and analyze arguments, or do you simply self-select people you think are experts and take their word for it? Have you seen any evidence that J.P. Morgan has bought? And I think he has a quote here, half a billion ounces or more. I guess he's thinking, who is this guy to ask me questions? I don't have to answer this guy. I got my own guys. All right. What other? Then we have the general. This one we hear a lot. Silver is so useful. And silver has so many uses. We talked about this at the top of the show. Ah, remember, silver has more uses than money antibiotic conductivity yeah and again usefulness doesn't provide in itself provide value you have to look at what the demand is for that use they go on about electronics they don't know that the demand for silver for electronics went from 310 million ounces in 2011 to 230 million ounces why is that they thrift they use other metals the, the electronics themselves are smaller now so they use a silver i don't care Silver is used, is so useful. It is used and they are finding more uses for it every day. Therefore, I am buying silver. That is all I need to know. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Don't bring this guy back. Now, there were some good points. Uh, here's one. It's nice to see good points. Thomas Cook, well, I agree that silver isn't treated as money anymore. See, that's when, when, you, when you understand that there are certain things that are facts. And you don't say, but they shouldn't be facts because because silver is money, period. And and uh, it would be if it wasn't for uh, the banksters. And, and if Rothschild didn't, you know, they do that whole. They can't accept that there's a fact that silver is not treated as money anymore. They don't use it as a medium of exchange. So he agrees to that. And then he says, that doesn't mean you shouldn't stack it. Bingo, star. That's right. It doesn't mean that if something isn't money, that it doesn't have value point we make all the time palladium doesn't have any monetary value it goes higher there's art paintings that go higher they're not money and so i say you're right we didn't say you shouldn't own silver indeed palladium and rhodium are not never were money and yet they have skyrocketed in price silver could do the same without any increase in monetary value so that was a good comment thomas it's not agreeing with me that's why i think it's a good comment it's that he understands and he can concede a fact not even a point. It's a fact. Silver is not used as a currency. Cole Devine, great guest. You should have said, this guy is a great guest. Keeps it real. However, in my opinion, silver is very undervalued. There's nothing wrong with wanting to believe that silver is undervalued. It's entirely different to say that it's not really undervalued. It's just that the markets are wrong. And me and my experts have been right for 10 years even though the markets indicate otherwise. That's not what he's saying. He's saying it's undervalued. Industrial demand should not be understated. Then he says palladium is an example. That's right. And he says, and maybe in the future, it could become a medium exchange. So he's saying, for, and everyone can come up with their own valuation model. That's fine. You have to. But you can't deny what the current value is. And he says it's cheap. And therefore, also, it does move to a certain extent with gold. And I have to agree. That's a... Good comment, Cole Divine. Let's see, were there any other good comments? Ah, uh, yeah, there were. Hold on. Let's see. Comex default. Then there are people who take a point, 
not a fact, but a point, and concede it. Gypsy Tree. Lewis leaving stacker shook. Stop listening to shows and he lists people. Um, Mike Reynolds says, this is the first person I've heard say that silver to gold ratio is what it should be. Now, when you are the first person to say something, it it does, it is a good idea to say, hmm, either this person is completely out of step and he's an idiot, this guy, or I wonder why he says that. So your, your curiosity should go up. Um, I don't know if he's thinking this is good, that I'm the only person that said this, but he says, I'd like to hear him and Keith Newmar have a discussion. Even better. I don't know what he means, but at least he's saying, I'd like to hear him talk to Keith Newmeyer, who believes that the gold-silver ratio is unsustainable. He's been saying it for years, and it should and it should be lower. So he'd like to hear Keith give his reasons, me give mine, and that, I think that's a good comment. ASMR people, small gold mug stacker, says Lewis often says things you don't want to hear, but it's always well rate rationed. Sometimes you learn more listening to with whom you disagree. That is definitely true. That's why I'm learning from all these comments about this guy. Now, there's some more here. Let's do... Th this one's actually funny. We see it a lot. I got four examples of it. I like this guy. He's a realist. Good interview. All right. This guy says, I bought a lot of silver because it's cheap. I buy $3,000 worth at a time, and I feel like I get good value for my money. Okay. And then I bought four half-ounce coins. It just doesn't feel right. I feel there's no value for your money. I hope he is wrong about silver, because from my research, it can go to at least $1,000 an ounce. I'm not even going to touch that. Let's just focus on the fact this is not an uncommon this is a feeling. This is not factual. You, if you have $3,000 to spend on gold or silver, there's a psychological inclination for some people to say, well, I want to get more silver because I can get more silver for $3,000 in gold. He's not the only guy who says this. Check it out. There's others. But I have a good analogy that will explain why this really is, doesn't make any sense. This guy says, yes, gold is the money of kings. Never heard that before. How can the average tax slave like me wants to protect my family from financial ruin afford 1,300 ounces of gold? I don't know. I mean, this guy is being dismissive about the value of silver. My intuition tells me to keep stacking as long as I can afford to do so. So again, there's no amount of gold you can buy because... It's too expensive, so you might as well buy more silver. Very common thought. There's another one. Watch this one here. Who can afford to invest in gold? To me, silver is by far better investment for the average person. Also, silver is widely usable. Okay, so he's got the same thing. Silver set to skyrocket. He's a full-on member of the Go Silver. Now, last one. The amount of silver used in manufacturing shows how undervalued it is you get way more for your money with silver than gold now the reason this is semi moronic is you've heard the old joke you buy um, a pizza and you say do you want to cut into four slices or eight slices and you say well I'm not too hungry. I don't think I can eat eight slices. I'll take four. Well, that's what this is. If you spend a or $3,000, as the guy said, on gold or silver, you're getting the same value at the time that you buy it. You may get more silver, but it's still worth the same amount as the gold. And the question is, which is going to do better? Now, if you had bought 3000 somebody actually gave that example. They had bought a certain amount of gold and a certain amount of silver back just a year ago, and now their silver is worth less and their gold is worth more. All right, there's that. And I, I'm not going to dissuade people of that. It is psychological. You're going to get more. But uh, that is something. And, and it's not an, even an argument. I was. It's, it's interesting. They make this point. Um, it's almost an argument 
against silver. That I'm poor and therefore I can only buy silver. And there's that old expression, when did a poor person ever give you a job? They don't. Well, poor people, they aren't going to move the price of silver if they don't have that much money because they think they can't even buy 50 or or $100 worth of gold. So it's an interesting argument. I wasn't, I wasn't even, I didn't make an argument against that. Then there's the idea that the gold-silver ratio is, this is the, it's out of whack. It, it just is. And Sean asked the question like it was a fact. This guy, how could 85 to 1 not be out of whack? It's almost, once you get to a point where you believe something, you can't even possibly think that this isn't right. Even though it's been 85 to 1 for the longest time. The explanation is based on, I don't know what he says here, but um, I'm not even going to go through this one. It's, it's getting late, and I think you get the gist of my reasoning why I think the gold-silver ratio is where it is. Um, then you get the, that is all I need to know argument. <laughs> we hear that one a lot. And that's usually either a famous person said it from authority. <clears throat> yeah, here it is. Or you believe a fact without any evidence. There is reason that J.P. Morgan is holding 500 million plus ounces of silver. Whether it is used for money or in electronics, I don't care. That is all I need to know. And again, he has the same thing. I can afford to acquire a little silver now and again. And again, I ask, how do you know J.P. Morgan is holding 500 million plus ounces? And I've heard 500 million, 700. It doesn't matter. There's all these different numbers that they say that they have. That's it. That's actually a rhetorical technique. Because if I said Goldman Sachs says 600 million ounces, or someone says Goldman Sachs is 400 million ounces, and the other person says Goldman Sachs is 700 million ounces, now you're just debating over whether it's 400, 700, or 600. But no one's asking, do they have any gold at all? So, what else do we got here from this guy? This one is the Achilles heel meme. Many of you might have heard this. I don't understand this one. Silver is the Achilles heel of the banksters, of the fiat fake debt notes, crypto Rothschilds, whatever that means. Achilles heel. Yes. Now, this one I like. This is a... We've discussed this in our valuation discussions about the future value of silver in the event of a collapse in the crash. And we have this in the small gold money matrix, that silver would be an ideal barter item in the event that you cannot transact the normal way, meaning through digital transfers, uh, dollar bills, quarters, nickels, dimes, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Euro, whatever it is. Um, yeah, but how much value do you place on that future? Because that's really insurance when you when you do something like that. And he says, we store silver until we need it to replace the fiat currency due to a crash. Now, there's a lot of assumptions in there that silver is going to replace fiat currency and there's going to be a crash. He forgets to mention that point. Silver will be the next currency to buy your daily stuff. So he's already locked in that this is fact, period, end of story. So the, the fiat currency is going to collapse. It's going to crash. And everyone's going to use silver. And that determines its value. Yeah, and you'll overpay for silver if you think that because the probability of that, I don't know what it is, but the market's not saying that, it's, it's not saying two things, that we're going to have a collapse and two, that if we do have a collapse, everyone's going to be rushing to silver. But he believes that and that's where he gives it its value. So he overvalues silver and he sees it in his mind as undervalued at its current price. <clears throat> and he's right and I did make this one. No, no one buys bread with a gold coin. So that's a point I make all the time. However, the insurance value only makes up some of the value and the premium on that portion of silver's value is very low. The current value of silver is not in its future transactional use in the event of some type of collapse. It's in its current need, whether it's in solar panels or electronics or for jewelry. It's not in... It has very little premium, if any, to buy for a collapse so you can use it for barter. There are people who buy it for that, so it has some value. That's not the bulk of its value. Then there's the last two are the you got to believe. You just you just got to believe it. I mean, you hear it enough. You've been on all these channels. You got to believe it. And it's offensive if someone doesn't believe it. This person says, uh, 
Mr. Butler deserves the respect of having equal time to rebut Lewis's statements about silver. I didn't say anything about Mr. Butler's statements about silver that he needs to rebut. But she says, Lewis's statements, oh, what I did say was Sean said it. He said, so, uh, he, he said, then Butler is wrong or something. And, and I didn't even know what he was talking. He said, he said, why is JP Morgan buying silver? And I said, I don't think that they are. That's the only rebut he can get. He could say they are. I mean, we already know what he says. He says they bought silver in amounts that I can never keep straight. So I'm not even going to repeat that. But he says, she says, Lewis's statements regarding silver are so contrary to what we in the silver community believe. I'm begging you to have Mr. Butler's rebuttal on this matter. See, now she's, she's heard it. She's repeated it. She's heard other people repeat it. <clears throat> and she's begging you this is to sean have butler's rebuttal on this matter many silver stackers believers not just silver stackers silver stackers and believers have their life savings in silver and that's my fault <laughs> i understand great idea on the rebuttal says jp and i mentioned i didn't refute mr butler's contention about silver manipulation the purpose of the discussion was not to denigrate silver it wasn't to make you an unbeliever uh, it was rather just to explain the irrebu irrefutable fact that the gold-silver ratio has increased the past seven years. That's it. I didn't tell anyone, don't buy silver. I didn't say you made a mistake. I didn't say, don't believe in it anymore. Many silver stackers, believers, have their life savings in silver. And therefore, you can't say anything else. So here's another, you gotta believe, you gotta believe. This one, I still truly believe in silver. 180 silver got the potential to break out quickly. Yeah, okay, but he's just, he just, you gotta believe in silver. This is a belief system. Here's another you gotta believe. Well, this is from me. This guy. People have been truly believing and having to believe that silver is undervalued, mostly because they listen to a steady diet of silver channels and never look to see why the gold silver ratio has averaged over 55 to 1 since 1974 and over 71 since 2014. Instead, they parrot what they hear on their favorite channels. Uh, and once a belief has taken hold, it's hard for them to see another point of view. I agree with myself on that tremendously. And then there's the old, we'll leave it with this. You'll see, you see, you'll see. We're not just 20 years uh, wrong. We're just 20 years early. Um... Sean, good job in setting this guy straight, this guy, on how valuable an asset silver is. I never said silver wasn't valuable. In fact, Sean referred it to his pocket change, something I've said before, but he called it pocket change. I bet when hyperinflation sets in, he will wish he listened to you, Ted Butler, David Morgan, the other real silver experts, the you'll see argument. We also used that one earlier. Uh, here's another you'll see. I would love to have this guy and Chris Dwayne have a conversation. I don't think that would be a conversation. I myself will keep stacking silver. See, it's be damned. You can't put any information in front of anybody once they believe. Hey, I'm stacking. I don't care what you say. I've got seven experts. They've told me that whatever I see on the screen, whatever the gold-silver ratio is, it's not true. It doesn't matter. I'd rather be 100 years early than a day late. Um, its value has not been recognized by most of yet, but the collapse will change that. Yes, we are living for the collapse. People live for the weekend and silver stackers are living for the collapse. And one last you'll see this idiot, didn't call me this guy, doesn't think silver is as good of a store of value as gold. That's not my thought that is proven uh, by numbers over the past 100 years 50 years gold has proven to be a better store of value not just by the gold silver ratio it's just the easier and it is a better store of value you may think one day silver is going to be equal to gold and but that's i don't know we will see that we will see on that one slime ball <laughs> so scott thinks i'm an idiot slime ball but not necessarily a shill a disinformation agent and the like. All right, let's see what you guys think of your favorite host here, Small Gold. Um, let's see what else we got here. 
give you something good to look at maybe a small gold mug let's get those mugs up on the screen and then the uh yeah that's what we're gonna do all right game over game changer that's going into the belly of the beast there i said things that no one else in the silver community are saying and i'm not really saying anything i'm just saying what it is and my rationale and sean actually said well that's as good a rationale as i can put forward and people actually believe they start to not believe what they actually see that the silver price isn't rising and they, they yeah but but it's because well it doesn't matter why it's because first you have to accept the fact that it isn't rising and that gold has done better than silver but they can't even accept that you'll see you'll see all right everyone let's see what we have here you'll see who's here let's see this guy let's see what this guy has to say here this guy all right now looks like i'm missing a lot of comments here so we'll kind of scroll through them here you guys are chatting with yourselves all right i hope you guys are right silver fortune thoughts on the interview had a commenter say Lewis's opinions are contrary to mine. Didn't say exactly what. I watched a bit, but never finished. L O L says Silver Fortune. Well, our opinions are slightly different. I think you you believe more a little bit that silver is set to skyrocket, but I think you're a little more realistic than most on that. Um, okay, what else do we have here? Okay, coins AZ. He's always corrected me from the day before. <laughs> what did I say this time? Hi, Lewis. Yesterday, yesterday, when I mentioned the AS, I don't know what the AS is, but oh, oh uh, I don't know. Mises. I'm referring to Mises in regard to the myth of intrinsic values examined here. All right, I'll have to look at that. Scott Wardell, careful. Impersonating Lindsay could get you in trouble from every community that has tried to follow him. Talking about Lindsey Graham? I don't know about Lindsey Graham. What else? Coins AZ. The reason I bring this up is because some pumpers claim that anything can be used as money. Only AG and AU have intrinsic value, which is a foolish claim. Okay, let's quickly discuss this Coins AZ. The reason gold and silver were used as medium of exchange was because they were, this is the regression theory of money, that they already had value and people wanted them before they were used as money people used to collect gold and silver make stuff out of them make jewelry make mugs and just they wanted gold and silver it was universally wanted but what made them ideal as money and why they held the crown as money is because they were divisible they were fungible and they were acceptable to people in exchange that's what gave them the value now what's interesting is if you look at austrian school of economics they believe and i used to too that something has to first have intrinsic value before it could be money and then it have to be divisible and fungible and broken down into to its component parts now bitcoin throws that out of the water because no one wants a bitcoin before it existed there was no need for bitcoin bitcoin jumped the line so to speak from having no intrinsic value and being just a some might say an ideal medium of exchange because it's trustless it's secure and it, but but it has no value pre-existing now that doesn't mean that mises or rothbards wouldn't have seen that bitcoin as money see what a lot of people misinterpret is that because they said gold was money yeah gold was money but the way they analyze it they okay when people analyze they don't select the money they analyze why it was money. They don't say, and therefore all future money will have to fit these characteristics. Now, to your point about something, anything with intrinsic value today, it's possible for it to become money a lot easier than in the past. So, for example, I like to talk about cognac and uh, whiskey. They're kind of money. You could kind of use them as money under the old expression everyone not everyone wants them but they would be universally acceptable they're divisible they're fungible they're not so durable but in today's world you can put things on the blockchain 
Oil is definitely not money. But you can make oil money by making it divisible via some type of digital representation of it. And that, in that sense, it could be money. So anything with intrinsic value that can be digitized today can more easily become money. The reason gold and silver were, in a sense, quote, God's money, they didn't require anything. Well, they, they required forging them by humans into coins, but they didn't require a lot of... Um, you didn't require an entire digitization and moving it onto the blockchain. Everyone has to have a device. It's a lot more complicated. But because of technological advances, a lot of things that have intrinsic value can now be used as money. Bernie has a bump on his head. Just looking through here. Mugs. There's a Having a great conversation amongst yourself. You probably won't even listen to me. That's all right. <laughs> Scott Wardell. It's coins AZ. Sadly, many pumpers conflate critical analysis of assets with hatred of those assets. Well, that's definitely true. What people do is they've become in love with silver, in love with Bitcoin, whatever the asset is, and they view it as a zero-sum game. All other assets are worthless. And not only that, they also think there's no flaw at all with their own asset, which is not true. There is no perfect asset. Now, if I say gold doesn't pay dividends, that's not a cut on gold. That's just a fact. But that is a cut on it in a way, because if you want income, gold doesn't give you income. But it's not supposed to give you income. Stocks could go to zero. Gold can't. Does that mean stocks are worthless? No. It just means they have a chance of going to zero. But stocks can go higher. And as uh, I think it was Fiona Whalen or no, or C. Rodriguez, they were saying the monetary portion of, of gold doesn't go anywhere. It, it reacts to the value of the fiat currency. So all assets have their pluses and negatives. But once you become into the worship of a particular asset, it's very, very hard to get out of it. Silver is rarer than gold. You hear all these things. and Now, obviously, if you're selling gold or silver or your business is based on promoting an asset like Bitcoin or Litecoin or Cardano, whatever it is, you're in those foundations, then it's hard for you. It's the old, it's hard to get a man to understand something where his salary depends on him not understanding. So, all right, let's see. What else do we have? Andrew says, coins, there appears to be a preponderance of rational people in the stream. Yes, Prashanti girl, best gang on YouTube. Yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not going for the uh, the numbers. I'm going for the quality. We have a good group, and uh, I'm not going to... Look, if, if I had to go through those comments in the live stream every night that I just went through, it'd be a waste of time. I couldn't do it. Andrew, just thought I should express a small goal with the facts and reason is good company in the comments. It's refreshing. Scotty, oh, I'm shocked. You've been fleecing us the entire time. You know what else is interesting? I don't think they understand this. As I've sold, through the affiliate links, a decent amount of gold and silver. Not from pumping it. I don't make a decent amount because you make $20 per, per sale. But the idea that you have to like make up stories to get people to buy it, I don't know. I feel I'd be, I'd feel if I bought silver on the basis that I, someone told me Comex was going to default or one of these fantastical stories about J.P. Morgan, I'd feel ripped off. <laughs> you know, silver set the skyrocket for 10 years. Well, you'll see. No. I thought you told me it was set to skyrocket. All right, let's see what else. What else? Scott Wardell. Lewis misinformed me about my mug wrapping and shipping. He tripled it and it took longer to unwrap. His fraud cost me 10 seconds and gave me a perfect object. Hmm. No loss. What shall I do? Sue. Yes. I did not represent to you that your mug would be tightly packed with extra packing. All right. Coins AZ. I got interested when I heard Lewis being interviewed on Silver Fortune's channel. Lewis was making rational arguments opposed to the hyperbole I often hear from the pumpers. Pablo, you famous. What did Pablo do? 
Oh, there he is. Okay. Pablo Pino. Lewis, you must be the guy. I guess they didn't hear your name. I was the guy. I, you know, it wasn't until I read those out to you that I realized that most people wrote, who is this guy? This guy. Who is this guy? All right. Let's see. Lewis, it's a sharp mind. It's obvious why he goes into details of why he holds certain views positions, such as AG is not money for the vast majority of people on Earth. Well, it isn't. You know, it's funny. I was, I was talking to... Someone I know. Let's put it that way. And they said, well, this is all obvious. I said, not if you've been indoctrinated into, into the silver cult. It isn't. Silver is money, period. Gold is money, period. And you say, why? Give me the definition of money. And then, and then he said, well, does anyone... I had this with David Morgan. He's, he, he was trying to argue silver is money. And then he mentioned there were like 10 states that said it's legal tender. And I said, how many people, how many transactions do you know? Uh, that are occurring in silver and gold. And he says, probably none. And I said, okay, so how is that money? Well, the law says it is. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Andrew, Lewis generally weighs all the facts and leaves his bias out of it, resulting in truthful stance most can't handle the space. Yes, that's true. And I appreciate that the people who follow this channel understand what I'm trying to do. Lewis, this is Mint Mark S.I., can you see these guys on the corner with their monster box of silver after the so-called collapse? <laughs> I got silver. Anyone want to trade? And then someone comes up and says, what's in that box? And they, they, they look at each other. They go, who is this guy? He doesn't even know what silver is. Who is this guy? <laughs> Real silver experts. Uh, yeah, I did see that about crypto with the New Zealand guy. Anything to take a swipe? I want... I wanted this guy mug. <laughs> ah, yeah. Coin, you could be this guy, I'll be that guy. Yeah, the small gold the small gold mug guys are here. But what are we gonna we can't call you know you can't say guys and gals anymore, even though it was guys and dolls. I mean I guess they must uh, not even allow that on Broadway anymore. Alright. This guy, this guy positive this guy all right presenti go she's got to run see you later the rarest metal i own is osmium hmm nice all right, i think i gotta go too all right andrew smoggle but what but will silver make more gains than gold as i mentioned the bulk and i mentioned it on the show the bulk case for silver is it gets a commodity bid meaning there's some type of surge in demand for most likely something in green energy like electric cars or solar panels where they just have to make them right away and they don't care what the price is. Or gold starts taking off and then that monetary component of gold splashes over to silver and then silver goes higher as well. Hegemony. Fiona Whalen is here. Hello. All right. Jack, Christian and Truth Devotone. He's a good guy. He. <laughs> Chris is a good guy. Who is that guy? All right. I think that's it. All right, everyone. Lewis, this guy, camera Santa. All right, everyone. I uh, appreciate you being here, sticking with me an hour and 15 minutes. We will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow night is Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold and... Uh, Looking forward to that. I don't have a topic yet, but we'll come up with something. Have a good night, mug stackers, game changers, and all around good guys. <laughs>